Oh, what about you? Well, this is a wee Citroen C3. It's, uh, you've maybe seen it on the channel before. Uh, this is a customer comeback. So the customers come back with this uh, wee car and uh, he says it's it's losing coolant. So uh, there's coolant in it at the minute there, all right. But uh, we did a few things in this. Uh, there's a, there'll be a, this will be featured in, a, in another video, previous video, uh, you can find it in the channel pages there. And that's a Tema belt that I did uh, December 2019 there and uh, 112,000. On it. And what we also did was we put that coolant flange in there. You can see that orange RTV gasket there. So I put that in. That was a genuine coolant flange because the one that was in it was a non-genuine one and uh, it was leaking coolant out the front. But he's still losing coolant. But uh, it's no big problem. And uh, we'll have a wee look, see, see what we have. So we'll let our filter box out of the way there. We can show you that thing in there a wee bit better maybe. Uh, so yeah, it tends to leak out of that area there on those current flanges, but I did a video on that as it says and uh, yeah, so we came around uh, a few days ago and uh, what we did was, or what I did, was we got this thing up the temperature, got the thermostat to open, it opens very very late, 103 degrees that opens up and it's electronically controlled, so that got the, the radiator nice and warm, so the radiator was roasting warm and as soon as the radiator you know, got really, really hot. The steam was coming off the radiator. So I had a wee good look at the radiator. So we were able to uh, disconnect the fan off it and sort of move the fan to the side. So there's only those two screws, there are wee torque screws, hold it there at the top. And we get the fan out of the way and it's leaking at the very, very top. There's pin, there's just barely wee pinholes. And I really can't show you that. Uh, uh, what we will show you is uh, whenever we get the radiator out. So this video is a radiator change. That's what the, that's what we're going to do here today. And he has spent a heap of money in this car. So he's paid for the current flange. There was new current put in it, and uh, there was a tenant belt and a water pump put on it as well. So he spent a heap of money. So I'm feeling generous, you know, that in the new year here. So. I told him, look, I'll throw a radiator in for you because it's so easy to do, you know, just pay for the radiator. I'll get you a radiator. Uh, so I'll get it at a trade price and I'll sell him it. I'll sell him the radiator retail and, uh, you know, uh, there'll be no labor charge. But this wee radiator's a gift. It's uh, dead easy. It's probably one of the easiest radiators you'll ever come across. Uh, there's two, it's all clipped in. So there's a big clip thing there, a big clip thing there. You take this fan off, disconnect two hoses, lifts out, that's it, job's good. And uh, I'll just run through a quite wee quick tutorial. If you ever have a change radiator in one of these things, there's a Citroen C3, this is a TU3A engine, same, you get that in the Peugeot 207, 208, different cars, it's a 1.4 petrol. And uh, there's just a couple of wee things, maybe just point out. So this car is cold. I'm not going to run this up the temperature again because we only have to wait on it cooling down. So I've already determined it needs a radiator. So and you know I'll show you the radiator. We'll we'll look at the radiator when it's out because you, you'll you'll see nothing here with it in. Uh, so what that will have is this is pressurized. It's a pressurized system. This this runs under, you know, at least a bar and uh, maybe a 1.2 bar something like that. Uh, it was about 30 psi, so that's about the same pressure as what's in your tires. So we can feel here that this thing is quite firm. This this bio here is quite firm. So if we release the bottom hose to drain this, you know, it'll come flying out and it'll come flying out all over us. So we want to release that pressure, and that's uh, now you want to do this when it's cold because uh, if this is warm and you re release the pressure. The boiling point from a high boiling point will go to a low boiling point instantaneously. Whenever uh, you release, you, you you know you release that the atmospheric pressure. So whenever you go from uh, a pressure of a bar to atmospheric pressure, uh, you know in an instant by taking this cap off, the water immediately boils and it flies out the top, and 
you have boiling water all over your all over your face. So that's how uh, people. I seen a photograph of a girl and she was holding her hand up, and this all this here was a big massive blister, and that's because she just she just screwed that radiator cap off and it just came flying out. But it's it's nothing to do with uh, you know the heat. Well, it is to do with the heat, but it's it's because you're going from a pressurized system to a non-pressurized system in, in, a, in a turn of the cap, and uh, the water instantly boils now, uh, and that, that's that's what happens. So it, it doesn't boil. Uh, it, it is it, it's at, it's sitting at 113 degrees uh, centigrade, uh, and uh, so uh, and then it'll it'll go to whatever the boiling point of this current is, which will be. And around 100 I guess and it, it does that in an instant so there we go so listen there's that pressure released now what we're going to do now is so that's that pressure released so what we're going to do now is put it back on again and screw it tight there we go and uh, that means that means uh, you know the, the coolant will, will not just fly out on us uh, the coolant will, will come out it'll just drop out under the sort of force of gravity but uh, because it's a seal system, uh, you know, it'll, it'll, that, the cap being on it will it'll slow it down. It'll create a bit of a vacuum and it'll, it'll hold it back so it'll not come out and fly all over me. Uh, I hate coolant getting on my hands and, you know, because you don't get it in your mouth. And it's, 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 it's poisonous, you know, and the, the small animals and cats especially seem to be very attracted to it because it's, it's sort of sweet to them. It's a sweet taste to them and it'll kill them. So with that pressure released, there's the difference that makes. So the car's up in the air and there's a bit of evidence there. There's a bit of red coolant, nice fresh red coolant that I put in. If your car's running and it's got, you know, old coolant and it's, you know, way watered down, the, uh, if you have good coolant and you change your coolant and, and stuff and it's, it's a good red colour, it, it is a lot easier then. If you have a wee, a wee tiny leak and it's hard to find, now you can, you know, you can pressurize this system as well, and, uh, you know, but this system does run under pressure anyway. So I have a wee pressure uh, kit there, and yeah, I didn't need to use it in this, to be honest with you. So I was able to just find this uh, without doing that. So you can clearly see there, it's wet at the bottom there, but it's actually like from the top of the radiator. And uh, you might sound I'm a wee bit bunged up at the minute here. But uh, not to worry. Well, uh, first things first, we'll get a, a tray underneath and we'll pull this bottom hose off now that the, the pressure's been released. So there's no drain plug uh, on this radiator here. So uh, we'll just release this bottom hose here. Now, what I like to do, and uh, you don't need to do this, but what makes it easy for you, is give this a scoot with WD-40. And what that'll do is that'll allow that clip to slide down the hose a wee bit easier for us. It'll come off nicely, hopefully. And we'll put our wee removal by a while. Just release it. I'll give it a bit of a wiggle. And a bit of a twist. Ah, there we go. So a bit of a twist just to break the seal and uh, catch the bucket below us. And then we'll just uh, release the cap and uh, that'll, that'll let the rest of it drop out. So there's another wee connector here over to the bottom right of the radiator. And uh, this is just a wee plastic clip. There's two wee tabs on it and you just put them with your fingers like that. And uh, give it a bit of a twist. And a pull. And there we go. There's a bit more coming out. So that's free. So we'll just, we'll just hide that in there for the minute. 
So while we're under here, there's a there's a connector on the fan, and while we're under here, we'll disconnect that. Then we'll do the same as top pose, bit of a squirt, and remove the clip. Okay. We might have to give this a wee bit of a helping hand here with uh, a hook here. And uh, just go around the hose. And that's that one removed. So we'll get in there's a Jubilee clip holds it on the thermostat and uh, get this top hose off that's that and we'll get these two connectors off so this is similar to the one that uh, that was on the fan but uh, I didn't film it so there's the yellow uh, security clip and we'll take that move it to the side and uh, there's another one in here which is which is a wee bit of a cord it's a wee bit awkward but uh, I'll show you that. Gotta release these cables up first uh, with uh, this wee trim tool here. See so if we can get this in here. Don't know I'll get this one handed. Nope, doesn't look like it. But anyway, that's it in there. So it's just a, like a wee Christmas tree job, you know? Uh, there we go. Right, so that's a saloon freed up a wee bit better. And uh, we'll be able to get this one here and here. So you can press down on this tab, but you can't really get a good press on it there. So what I'm going to have to do is, I'll try and keep you in there, is get the wee pick tool and lift the wee tab up from in here, like that. And there we go, so there, there's that wee tab. We tab there. You can't really get a press down on it very well, so I just lifted it up. It doesn't really press down at all, in fact. Uh, that's why it doesn't come if you press it down. So you need to lift that up, but it's it's button it's button up against the 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 back side of that module. So uh, there's where we picked it away. But that's okay. So that's our. We'll get that wiring out of the road now. Let's see now. It's all that wearing free, it's free as a bird. Get it out of the way over there. There we go. So we'll just pull this fan out now. I think. Hey, right, so this fan, it's just there's just two two e spuds that hold it on the on the bottom, and there's two T twenty torques. So I like to use these boys here, and uh, you can get a ten mil on it, at least ten mil ratchet. So this makes it that easy. And quick, if you're in an awkward space, so they're just uh, sort of self tapped into the plastic of the radiator, and uh, spin. There's one. Oot. Get this on. one. Man's probably blocking it there, guys, but. I have to do this, you know. You can film it and do it, but you st I still have to do this job, you know. And I don't want to spend too much time on it because I'm not really getting paid for this. Hey, right, we'll see if that just lifts out now. I just uh, got these lambda wires uh, out of the way there. So just lift it. One fan unit. Now, if another wee pipe to take off, it's this, uh, this wee overflow pipe here. Now, these can be quite tight, so again, with a wee squirt and uh, there's a wee clip back so we'll give that a wee spin there so it'll spin so we need to we need to hold these this is just with our fingers and these are tight that's it so yeah so they don't usually break these I know on Fords and stuff see these overflow pipes the 
they're near enough impossible to get off without breaking them. But uh, and these here they're not they're actually not too bad. So uh, uh, so that's at, at the least. So we'll, we'll get them poke that in somewhere out of the way. And you don't want to you don't want to kink that wee plastic pipe. Now what holds this rod in? And this is a stage rod now. Is these things here? So they're they're just clicked into place there. And that's another one. So they need to they need to slide out. Now I'm probably not going to be able to film this, unfortunately, but uh, I'll be able to show you it whenever the radiator's out. So what we need to do is there's two holes, and you'll not see it in camera. I don't think so anyway. There's a hole there, and there's a hole on the other side. And you need to sort of, you need to you sort of, there's two, there's just two wee spring clips, and you need to sort of get a bit of a wee bit of tension, and then up in here you'll be able to prise that out. So I might be able to get a wee bit of uh, uh, footage with that. So uh, as it comes out, I'll maybe, I'll maybe take it, but I'll have to, I'll have to do a sort of off camera a wee bit. So what we'll have to do is we'll get a wee screwdriver in there, and you get a bit of a wee pran. And you jiggle it about and uh, you maybe get a wee screwdriver in there just to pry it out and you feel it releasing and then you do the other side and you feel it releasing and you get it to move out that wee bit and then we'll do the same do the same in this one so it's just in with a couple of grommets at the bottom and uh, just give it a wee pull and that will lift out nicely so there we go that's our radiator out and I'll just see if we can Try and show you where this was actually taken from. Now you can see a lot of red about the place where the coolant has been, uh, you know, evaporating off. But uh, where this was actually taken from, and you can't actually see it. Well, I can see it, but it's leaking from there. Uh, you see it sort of wet around there. So it's it's that wee join there. It was just I think it's just that wee one. Uh, there it doesn't look too hot around there. But it's leaking where it goes into the, the top bit there. And uh, there's another place over here, which is the same there. So you can see a dump there, and that one there maybe as well. So very, very subtle leak. And it's only when the thing pressurizes and only when, uh, you know, the thermostat's open and this gets a bit of heat into it and those, those wee apertures expand. So uh, with a car sitting there, you see it at the start, it was filled to the maximum uh, level and it wasn't leaking at that point, you know, so uh, it's only when it with the heat and that wee bit of expansion there. Uh, it's tiny, tiny, just a wee fracture there. So, uh, yeah, these, these clips, uh, you can't, couldn't really see it, me doing what I was doing. So you slide a, uh, so, so that sits in, in the gut, but this is the, the front face of it. So you need to get a wee flat blade screwdriver just on that wee clip there, uh, you know, just press it down. And uh, while you're doing that, while you're doing that motion, you, let me see, uh, it goes that way. You, you want to get some, you know, another wee, wee flat blade screwdriver just in there and just tease that. So you, you can pop, you can pop that one, you can pop that one, that'll, that'll release and then you move over with another screwdriver. All at all the same time, putting a wee bit of, ten, wee tiny bit of tension on this to try and pull that forward and and you get a you get a flat blade screwdriver in there onto the, onto that face there let me see if i can get a wee screwdriver to demonstrate here there we go so that goes in like that and onto there and you just give it a wee a wee push now, what's dead easy to do is when you put that in, it goes underneath that, you know, and uh, you're not pushing it anything, nothing happens. You sort of need to keep the screwdriver up the way and slide it in against the, you know, the housing. So you slide it in against the housing and uh, get it onto there, and you pull it, pull it down a wee bit, all the, all the same time pulling that. So that there bit is a wee bit fiddly. That's the, that's probably the most fiddly, fiddliest part of this job actually, and uh, we'll just get the. The new radiator out here. So 24 hour delivery from uh, Countrywide Freight to Alice Auto Parts uh, NA Limited in Northern Ireland. That's our super duper parts supplier who don't pay me to say that by the way. I just say it because they deserve it. And uh, here's what we've got. NRF 
they are the cooling and they turn out with torch off. So, yes, I usually use Nissan's uh, radiators, which aftermarket radiators, who are an o who are an OE supplier. Uh, I'm not familiar with this brand at all. Um, so uh, there we go, plenty of they're making a global company, local presence. Oh, very good. So there's a couple of fat. Let's get wee bits and pieces in here. I don't think we'll need them. Uh, that's to convert. I think that's to convert that to a male end. Uh, so we'll set that to side. There's a wee ring in there. And uh, we've just checked. There's the two bottom lugs. That's that. That's that offset. Some of them are some of them are straight, and some of them are actually blanked. I think uh, there's a couple of variations of this radiator, and they have subtle differences. So I'm just checking. Uh, there's our, so I need to put our clips, and there's where our fan uh, mounts onto. There's another one under there. So looks good. We'll get that in then. So we're going to offer this radiator in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some WD-40 and the wee grommets that it sits in down there just give them a, a blast and uh, that means they'll, they'll fit in nicely. So that's that and here we go. So just to line those bottom two grommets. And it's going to fit in quite nicely there. And the top two clips just under there like that. And that was in the wrong way. That's it. Radiator installed. <laughs> Click this wee boy in here. No modifications required. Gift. Electric fan back in. Let me see, just a bit, a bit of curve with it. So not, it's not jamming anywhere. Oh, it is jamming somewhere. There we go. And there's two wee tabs just down the bottom. And uh, I'll just have to reach below and make sure they're, they're in place. Okay, electric tab, uh, electric fan. Electric tab, electric fan tabs at the bottom there uh, are located. So we'll get these. They just screw into the plastic, so there won't be a threaded hole. It'll just be a, a drilled hole, and uh, we'll have to. We'll be creating the thread here. So uh, it's no big deal, but. That's that. So before we put the top hose on, we get these uh, these wires. Bring them back out of their uh, out of their resting place. Out of the wee hidey hole there, and we'll get them into into play here. And get them sorted out so they're not snagging. And uh, so the big thing about uh, fan wiring, you know, and that's that's may sound obvious, but you need to keep a wee eye out that you know. They're rooted in such a way that they're not. There's no way that they can catch in the fan. So uh, if if uh, you don't want it bending around in a in a strange manner, which is why I'm doing a doing a bit of a fiddle here first, just to get them into some sort of reasonable lay, and I'll put the fan one itself on, which is the lower one, which you can't. You're not going to see. And Get that in first. Okay. Right, so that's um, clipped in. That's that's us now with that. So with the wiring in, fan on, all that jazz. Uh, put this top hose up. Right, so that's easy enough done. Like that. And we'll get that tightened up and get that clip into place. There we go. So that's one of them self-retaining clips, it sort of stays open itself. 
So it does, so you see how it's still loose there? So you have to give that a bit of a wiggle. There we go. There we go. Right. Just a wee thing on, on the placement of clips. Yeah, you have to watch that you're not the clip isn't over the you know the bulge part of the radiator. It has to be forward to that. So uh, you just have to make sure it's on the, the wee bulge part. So uh, it's just a wee thing on clips there. It's uh, very important and maybe sometimes overlooked. So we just have a Jubilee clip to tighten down there. That one there, just down at the bottom. So the bottom two holes connected there and uh, that's pretty straightforward. The one on the right just clicks on in an ordinary hose with a clamp. And uh, what I'm going to do here is now, there's a couple of bleed screws on this. Uh, I showed you this in the, in the last video when I changed this current flange. So there's a bleed screw there, and there's a bleed screw in there. You see that wee cap on the heater hoses? Not on the camera as usual. So that, that just screws off there. But I'm not going to do, I'm not going to undo those, and I'm going to tell you for why. So this thermostat here, this thermostat is on the is on the top hose, and it's closed. So the water that we lost, the coolant that we lost, would have been out of that hose, and what was in the radiator, and whatever was it was out of that. That's the the bottom hose. So that's all we lost. That that will well, it'll come down a bit because of the the loss in this hose. But the engine basically is still full of coolant. So what we've done is we're using this uh, fill funnel, which I've showed before, but in case you're, you, you haven't seen it, seen, seen it like this before. The idea of this, on pressurized systems, I'm going to run this, and uh, whenever, when, this is going to bleed, it's going to self-bleed. Uh, so what, what happens is, the coolant out of this, this uh, expansion tank comes out, comes out of that pipe there, and that was the, the pipe on the right bottom of the radiator and I don't know where you can see it here but it's way down there that's it there so that comes down and fills the radiator from the bottom and that will fill the radiator from the bottom up and then the air will escape through that hose there and back into the expansion tank so the radiator will fill itself so we will have air then uh, from the closed thermostat, there will be error in here, and there'll be error uh, where it, it came up and met the existing coolant that's in, still in the engine. So I'm not going to unscrew that uh, those blades because uh, you know I don't think I don't think it's uh, there's any point to that. But there still will be error in these hoses. So but the but the radiators fill. So anyway, uh, so what it did now here's a, here's another couple of checks. A check. There was oil in the engine before I run this up because I'm going to just sit, let this sit nail and run it up to complete uh, temperature. It's going to take a while because it's going to run up to uh, 100. This will open at 103 degrees. This thermostat, electronically controlled, as I said. So I'm going to monitor the temperature on uh, that wee by there, and you probably can't, see, you probably can't see that, but it's 34 degrees. So I had it running there a wee second ago, but uh, I just knocked it off because you wouldn't have heard a word I was saying. So, um, okay, when this, when this thing opens, instead of pressurizing, uh, you know, this is, this, is up, this is up in the atmosphere. But what will happen is the coolant will expand. It'll expand like crazy and go right up and fill that funnel again. So that's why these are called spill-free funnels. So if you, if you run this with the cap off, you know, to, to try and get the air out of it, It'll, it'll just uh, overflow and go all over the place and you'll lose all that lovely new coolant that you put in. So uh, there's that fill free funnel and as I say, I showed you this before, there's the part number there. Uh, no links, go and flip in, Google that yourself and uh, you'll be grand. Okay, it's not that expensive. Uh, well, it, it's there for a funnel, but uh, so what you can do is you can fill that up and then you can close that tap and you can, you can, take it, you can just lift that off if you want. So uh, there's a few things and there's, that's a, the bottom of this is split in two. So this, this is a bleeder. So that just doesn't go into there. There's, there's two sort of orifices there and uh, you get various adapters to fit in. So I, I've used that a few times now. I don't have it very long. I did use a vacuum bleed system, but it didn't really like that, uh, believe it or not, because I had, a, I had a few problems with it one time where uh, I did a vacuum bleed and then the thermostat wouldn't open. 
because it basically sucked the thermostat closed. Now the thermostat was probably dodgy anyway, and it probably needed changed anyway. But uh, you know, as far as the customer is concerned, the thermostat was working, and you you know you broke the coolant system, and uh, uh, I filled it by doing a vacuum, and then after that the car was uh, running too warm, so uh, it needed a thermostat. But you know I'm putting that down to well, it's a bad thermostat anyway. It shouldn't do that. But uh, from a customer's perspective, all they see is, oh, well, you were working on that car and the thermostat doesn't work. So uh, I'm a wee bit reluctant to do a vacuum now if, uh, when that happened. But uh, anyway, I'm going to run this up the temperature. That's, I think that's about it. Um, you know, obviously uh, check for leaks and stuff like that. The other thing is, because this is a pressurized system, if there is any, if this is going to leak somewhere, I really need to run this up the pressure. I'm going to use it. I'm only using this, pig pardon, to, to expel the air out of it, but I'll have to run it uh, on pressure. So if there is anything, anything uh, any clamps aren't right or any hoses that don't fit properly, this is an aftermarket radiator. It all seems to fit okay, and all the diameters of the, the, the outlets seem to be fine, so they seem to be okay. They all clicked into place dead on, and uh, you know, but we'll have to see, and uh, we need to run it under pressure to. To, just to see that uh, so whenever I get all the air out of this uh, I'll run the car and then just uh, just leave it sitting and let it cool down it will drop it probably will drop a wee bit when the coolant cools because you know when, it, when it's warm the coolant's expanded and whenever it cools down it, it contracts so whenever it contracts we'll fill that to the, to the level and uh, you know before we give it back to the customer because uh, you know you don't want to give the car back and uh, you know he comes out the next morning and it's a way way down and he thinks oh well, this thing's still leaking or whatever because uh, that's what he's been suffering he's been suffering with various leaks in this thing and uh, yeah he's been he's been pretty patient and he's, he's a good he's a good lad so as, as I said at the start of the video uh, because this is so easy to do I'm just gonna do that for him and say oh, there you go sure just pay for the radiator and you're good to go so many thanks for watching all the best as ever, and uh, there's that wee boy there. Um, it's not, uh, I'm not promoting this, nothing, just showing you. But all the best, and maybe you get something out of that. Easy, easy peasy. Wee bonds, all the best, and bye bye.